Hey guys, I'm with the uh, music composer of Volume. Um, it's kind of has a ring to it, doesn't it? But music <laughs> yeah. and Volume. Um, just tell about, tell us about what you know about the game. Um, okay, so uh, Volume is a stealth game. Um, the premise of it is that uh, you, there's no, uh, that everything is done by avoidance rather than uh, combat. Uh, there's actually, as you can see, it's being played in the moment. You can't ever uh, kill the guards, there's no uh, death time. The best you can do is stun them uh, or distract their attention. So the whole emphasis of the game is on uh, really on avoidance and uh, honing in on the stealth side of things. I think a lot of the uh, recent AAA titles, uh, you know, Dishonored and Assassin's Creed, you know, you can have the option, you can go through things stealthily or you can choose to take the sort of gung-ho action route. We want to get rid of that for this, so it's literally a stealth game. Is there a story to this? Uh, a reason? Yes, absolutely. It's a modern day retelling of the Robin Hood legend. Um, and it's set in a not too distant future and a sort of dystopian vision of the world um, where the, uh, the government is sort of, uh, you know, taking away a lot of um, civil freedoms and such. And, uh, you know, the, the wealthy corporations have stole the wealth of the uh, kind of poor, uh, innocent person. And uh, you're basically, you've discovered this um, volume of um, blueprints to all of the strongholds uh, where this wealth is being stored. So you're going in and you're showing people how to break in and reclaim what was taken from them. Now, is the level designed to be this, like, orange and blue? Is uh, that it's going to change. Uh, it changes on a, uh, you can see on the other screen over there, you know, it's a completely different colour scheme and design. Uh, there's, you know, there's going to be so many levels. Uh, each one's going to be different and have its own different, uh, you know, unique points to it. And um, so on and so forth. Yeah. So he's shooting. What's he shooting there exactly? Uh, that's called a bugle. Um, that is a sound emitter. So you fire it to distract the guards with a noise, and then they go over and investigate it, allowing you to progress through the level. Now, is this game like? I know you can see it, but yeah. if you were the character, would this room be pitch black, or is it like coloured? Uh, it's, it's, this is virtual reality. So basically, the game is set inside a warehouse, which you can kind of see. Uh, around the screens and all of this is virtual reality um, so yeah he's seeing it as we are because I was wondering because if it was to do with sound I thought you know you use sounds to distract the guards and then yeah. you find your way through but yeah you do yeah yeah so being the composer what sort of music do you make for the game uh, very good question um, it was to be honest it was like coming into it with a bit of a blank canvas um, I really didn't want to do what you expect uh, from a stealth game, uh, it would be so easy to just kind of do a derivative M uh, Metal Gear Solid score or Splinter Cell or something like that. Uh, I wanted to do something with more emotional content which sort of um, really complements the narrative of what's going on as well as supporting the gameplay. And that's actually been quite a difficult balance to find so far. Um, but I think we've got there. <laughs> this is the first time the game's had music in it and um, we've had really positive feedback. It's been working well so far. So. Um, I'm excited. There's two main um, elements of the gameplay. There's the, the stealth and the sneaking part. And there's also um, a high tempo, fast paced action segment when you get caught by the guards. So it's been really fun writing for both of those two disciplines. You got the sort of big orchestrations for the action music and then the more ambient sound designing stuff for when you're just sneaking around. So it's been a fun challenge. Um, are you enjoying Eurogamer at the moment? Yeah, it's been great so far. I've um, literally got stuck in the key for Arkham Knight for about an hour earlier, but that was awesome. You're not even looking after your own game, you're not half over there. Oh, I'm chilling out, mate. No, I'm enjoying it. I'm taking it all in. Uh, I'm only here for the day, so I wanted to see as much as I possibly could. So, um, yeah, I'm hopefully going to get on uh, Assassin's Creed Unity before I go. And I also really want to see The Evil Within. But um, other than that, I don't think I'm going to have much time, unfortunately. So. I think maybe later you might get a bit of time. I'm hoping people are going to go home at about five and I can just go on everything, but yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I think today's more the majority of just school trips and colleges. It does seem to be that way, doesn't it? But um, it's cool, you know, it's been such a great reception. It's so cool to see like kids interested in the indie games as well as the big yeah. AAA ones as well. You know, we've had so many people coming through being very complimentary. So yeah, it's been great so far. You've had good responses. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, I hope they like the actual game as much, but <laughs> if we could stop it and ship it as is, then yeah, I think it would be good. And what platform is this based? Uh, this is going to be on PS4. Um, it's an exclusivity period. It's a PS4 exclusive? It is indeed, yeah. Well, for the uh, for a short uh, period, and it'll be available on Steam and other platforms after that. So, But yeah, it's going to be out on PS4 first. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, go check it out. Have a look on the website. Uh, follow Michael and myself on Twitter. And um, yeah, check out the game next year. Uh, thank you very much. Cool, cheers, man. Um,